We recently got the Nikon D810 and fell in love, but the one thing holding us back from completely switching to Nikon was that they didn't have a lens comparable to the Canon 70-200 2.8. .8. We found out when we actually started using it for portrait work that when we're doing our kind of signature tight headshots, the Nikon is more like 135 millimeters, whereas the Canon 70-200 was an actual 200 millimeters. So we had to keep using the Canon. We went searching for another lens that could possibly replace it though, we found the Sigma 120-300 f2.8. Now, it's more of a sports lens than a portrait lens, and we discovered pretty immediately that we weren't going to be hand-holding it at weddings. It's it, massive. Yeah, it's six and a half pounds. It also costs about twice as much as the 70-200s at $3,600 new. But let's give it a shot and see how it does in the portrait environment. We have our daughter Madeline over here. There's that nice tight headshot. I'll switch over to you. Here are your lights. So Chelsea, this is the Canon on top. This is the Sigma. It looks much closer. Below. Right. That's funny, right? The Canon at 200 millimeters is closer than the Sigma is at 300 millimeters that was from the same distance. Madeline did not move. This Sigma, just like the Nikon 7200, has serious focus breathing problems. And even though it's bigger and heavier and more expensive, it still doesn't have the reach of the Canon 70 to 200. But do the focus breathing problems change as the subject gets farther away? Let's go outside and test that. The focus breathing is a real problem for portraits, but it's still much longer than the Nikon, Tamron, and Sigma 70-200s, which also have their own focus breathing problems. With the DA10, this metal hood and this bracket handle, I weigh this whole thing in at 10 pounds. So let's get some shots, starting with the Nikons. We have the two highest resolution Nikons, the D810 and the D7200, because the D7200 on the Nikon 7200 gives you the same kind of reach. I want to see how much more detail you get out of the high megapixel body and this big lens. Good news, at about 50 yards, the focus breathing problem is completely gone and we do see a true 300 millimeters. Swap those lenses. I'm so scared of dropping this thing. Mostly because I'm afraid I'd damage the patio. Send tremors throughout the neighborhood. Looking closely at the pictures, we can see that the 300 millimeter F2.8 does indeed extract a lot more detail than the 70 to 200s were, especially when you put them on that full frame D810. Now for the Canon bodies, did you know that you can adapt Nikon lenses to Canon, but you can't really adapt Canon lenses to Nikon. These little adapters, you can see it's really, really thin. Take advantage of the fact that Nikons have a little less flange distance than the Canons. They even allow manual aperture control because Nikons have mechanical aperture controls. So I'll put that on there and then slap it on my 5D Mark III. We've got, also got the new T6S here because it's got a 24 megapixel sensor and an APS-C body, so it's got the highest pixel density of any Canon camera and it should extract the most detail out of this lens. The same held true in the Canon world. We got more detail out of a full frame camera and the 120-300 than we could on an APS-C body and the 70-200. And on the 5DSR, we extracted incredible amounts of detail. This is an unbelievably sharp lens. So if you need 120-300 f2.8 in a full-frame body, this is your best option because it's the only choice out there. But the good news is it's a fantastic lens. It's really heavy, really expensive, and really, really sharp. There's nothing else like it unless you want to go APS-C body with a 70-200 f2.8. Be sure to subscribe to see more camera review videos, lots of photography tutorials, and our weekly live show at sdp.io slash live. Thanks.